Alléluia, Jésus conquiert le monde. Alléluia, c'est à nous en trouble. The Lord reigns in my life today. Alléluia, Jésus conquiert le monde. Alléluia, Alléluia, c'est à nous en trouble. The Lord reigns in my life today. The Lord reigns in my life today. The Lord reigns in my life today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Hallelujah. Azakrato zomokos kezeketias. Balata zakrato zomokos kezeketia. Neglete zekete. Bragaska zakrato zokotia. Brata zakrato zomokos kezeketia. Bragis kezeketia. Bratu zokotia. Brata zakrato kezeketia. Bragas kezeketia. Ski brokos kezeketia. Alléluia. Secret et secret. Alléluia. Alléluia to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Say Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, say this. Say, say the word of the Lord. Say it. Say it. Say the word of the Lord. Say this. Say the word of the Lord surrounds me. Like the mountains surround Jerusalem. Say the word of the Lord shall perpetually dominate my life forever. The word of the Lord shall perpetually dominate my life. By the authority of the Holy Spirit. By the authority of the Holy Spirit. By the authority of the Holy Spirit. Who dwells in me? Who dwells in me? Who dwells in me? Who dwells in Jesus' name? Amen. Now, now, now. Instead of saying I cover myself with the blood of Jesus, I know that there's, there's no such thing. There's no such thing like that in the Bible. You say I cover my family with the word of the Lord. I surround my family with the word of the Lord. Say it, say it, say it. I surround my family with the word of the Lord. Now, now, say, say this. I surround my marriage with the word of the Lord. I surround my marriage with the word of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Now, notice we didn't say the word of God, but rather we said the word of the Lord. There, 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 are two, there are two different things. The word of God is the Logos, the one that we read from the book. The word of the Lord is the Rima, the spoken word to God's defi to, to a particular person at a particular time for a particular purpose at a particular place. That's the Rima word. I surround my entire family with the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. You know, even as your children go to school, you lay your hands on them. You say, I cover you with the word of the Lord. Go and prosper. You see that? You see, you see. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you have any of your child that is misbehaving, kind of stubborn, you lay your hands on him. You say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, may the word of the Lord dominate your mind. May the word of the Lord dominate your spirit. You see that? You see, that's a, You see, remember, we, we just... We, we, yesterday we looked at the, uh, at the lesson 
Um, the the fourth kind, the four kinds of confession. Like we looked at the fourth kind, which is a confession of faith. See, that's the most important to the believer. So, you, so you speak the word of the Lord. You say, as you go to school, you will go with the word of the Lord. You are covered with the word of the Lord. You see, that's the way. You see, it matters the people you surround yourself with. That, that's the point. See, there's a language of the kingdom. That's why we are we are citizens of Zion. You see, we are. You know, some preachers say remain rapturable. No, we are not trying to remain rapturable. We, the moment we got born again, we became citizens of heaven. So we are not trying to remain rapturable. We know we will go to heaven. But 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 the point is that we need to know the language, so that we can know how to speak it here before we get there. Amen. Ephesians chapter three verses fourteen and fifteen says. I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven are named his name. So it's a family. Some are in heaven, some of us are here in the earth. But there is a language, but there is a language we speak. There is a way we talk. You say, I cover this business with the word of the Lord. If there's a proposal you want to forward, you say, I forward this proposal with the word of the Lord. Go and prosper. You see that? Don't just say, I cover this with the word of the Lord and there is no word. You speak the word of the Lord. You say, I cover this business with the word of the Lord. Go and prosper. That's the word of the Lord. You see that? You see that? Say, I go for that business meeting by the authority of the word of the Lord. I prosper in that meeting. Everything I say matters. You see that? It matters. It matters how you, you see, you are the one that will determine whether they will fire you at work or whether they will re retain you. Jesus said, by the words of your mouth, you shall be justified. By the words of your mouth, you shall be what? You shall be condemned. You say, in the name of Jesus, by the word of the Lord, I am indispensable at work because I go with the word of the Lord. And what is the word of the Lord? I am indispensable at work. You see, you speak those words. I go to class with the word of the Lord. I am an A student. That's the word of the Lord to me. Amen. You, it's up to you. It's up to you. Amen. Amen. Maybe you have been, your, your children. And how can you how can you allow your children to be suffering nightmares? They are telling you they have bad dreams. You say in the name of Jesus, I, I, as they go to bed, you say in the name of Jesus, I cover you with the word of the Lord. No, no nightmare can come. I cover myself with the word of the Lord. I cover myself with the word of the Lord. No nightmares. Brothers and sisters, every night before we go to bed, do you know what we say? Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when, before we go to bed, this is what we say. We always say, I sleep like a baby and I wake up as a king. That's how I, that's how I say it. I say, I sleep like a baby and I wake up like a king that I am. I sleep like a baby, I wake up as a king. Like A baby does not suffer nightmares. A baby does not suffer nightmares. Have you ever had a baby wake up to say, Mommy, I had a bad dream? A baby, a baby just sleeps and enjoys the glories of heaven. Amen. 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 And each time I go to bed, I say, I sleep like a baby. I wake up as a king that I am. Then when I lie down, I'll say, Father, speak to me for thy servant hear it. That's how, that's how I, sleep. I sleep. That's why no devil can come to talk to me at night. No demon. Because I, before I go to bed, I always say to the Father, Speak to me for thy servant here, then I'll sleep. Then he does speak to me. You see that? Alright. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, why the Lord made us say that, we, we cannot really tell. But, but the Lord knows why. Maybe you need it. Amen. And we believe... Amen, 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 amen. Yes. All right. We want to. Oh, Sister Amma, you wanted to say something? No, I just said it. I said it's worth more than money. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, we want to look at a very important lesson. Um, we anticipated teaching it at the Bible Center today, but. Since we are meeting online today, because of the snowstorm, we, the Spirit of the Lord has given us the liberty to share it online. We will see how much we can take on it, but it is something that we need to know. 
as children of the kingdom. It's, uh, it's rather an unusual topic. And uh, with humility in the Holy Ghost, we've not heard any preacher preach it. But maybe they, they, they probably have been. But you know, in our class, everything we teach here, the Spirit of the Lord teaches us. And um, like we said, it is an unusual topic. <coughs> and um, we're going to... <laughs> it's a funny title, but it's in the Bible. And um, by the end of today's class, you will come to your own conclusions. But we dare say that um, some of you may not be comfortable with the lessons. And some of you may probably say, okay, now this is it. This is it. This guy is an antichrist. <laughs> And there's a reason why we say these things. But we want to discuss the lesson Belial. 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 B E L I A L. Or Belia. It all depends on how you pronounce it. Belia. Or Belial. We want to discover from the Bible um, what Belial is. <clears throat> Some of us have probably read it from the Bible, but you have never really taken time to understand it. And uh, but before we start looking at God's mind on it, on the subject, uh, <clears throat> we would like to read to us what some schools of thought have taught on, on the word Belial, what they think Belial is. And um, please listen carefully. Please listen carefully, carefully, carefully. Pay close attention. God has something to say to us, as he has always done. Belial. Say it. Say Belial. Belial, say it. Belial. Amen. Say it. Say Belial. Are you afraid? Say it. Say Belial. Yeah. Say it. Say Belial. 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 Yeah. Belial. Yeah. Are you afraid? <laughs> okay, let's change the subject then. No, no. Yeah. We are not afraid. Amen. Yeah. All right, so you are not responding. Say Belial. Okay. Alright, so we want to want to look at that. Who is Belial or what is Belial? Some schools of thought have written and opined that Belial Belial that Belial is a fallen angel and one of Satan's most important and evil generals. Some schools of thought have opined that it is very deceptive in beauty. The beauty of Belial is, is very deceptive with, in terms of appearance and, and that it has a soft voice of treachery. Recklessness and lies, you know, there are some schools of thoughts uh, Who also think that he is He is especially gifted in the area of 
sexual perversions, fornications and lust. So the 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 think that the 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 spirit of Belial is responsible for all manner of fornications and sexual perversions and lust. And um, some Hebrews have thought that Belial is the angel that is next to Lucifer. By that, they simply mean that after Lucifer was created, Belial was the next angel that was created by God. But right from the day that angel Belial was created, he had been rebellious to God. The Greeks, the, the Hebrews believe, the Hebrews now. And that they believe that the fall of Belial from heaven became the personification of evil. And that um, Belial was one that danced before King Solomon and was among the demons who walked under King Solomon's command, ruled by King Solomon's magical ring. Some Hebrews believe that Solomon had a magical ring and that Belial was one of the spirits that Solomon commanded, always danced before Solomon. Now, some Hebrews believe that. We're trying to tell you what some schools of thought have opined concerning the spirit of Belial. Now, please listen. It's no use going to the internet right now. Most of you are going to the internet. Listen, listen. Let's teach you what you don't know. What are you trying to go to the internet for? Okay, so let's leave you then. All right, let's change this lesson. Since some more, some of you are going to the internet. You know, some of you are trying to Google what Belia is. Listen, let's teach you what you don't know. No, some are already going on the internet. We're seeing them. We're seeing them. You have forgotten who is teaching. We're seeing some of you going to the internet. Listen, let's teach you what you don't know. Amen. Or should we change the lesson then so that we can do yes, something? Sir. Let's... Yes, sir. All right. So, some schools of thoughts believe that. Now, <coughs> um, um, the medieval Turkey, the Turkish people, the medieval period of Turkey. Or the medieval Turkey magicians believed that sacrifices and offerings were necessary to invoke Belial as a person, as a spirit. And Belial is reputed to breaking promises to magicians. But those who managed to gain favor from him are handsomely rewarded. That's the belief of medieval Turkey. And uh, a Christian demonologist by the name Johann Wena is of that belief. And uh, he believes also that Belial commands 80 legions of demons. This particular demonologist thought. And um, some have actually gone with his school of thought. All right. Uh, some others have also believed that the Jewish apocrypha or apocrypha uh, believe that the term Belial is characterized with wickedness or, worthless, or worthlessness. When something is worthless or wicked, terribly wicked. The etymology of the word is uncertain, they say, they claim, but is most commonly translated as without worth. When something is without value, the Jewish apocrypha refers to it as Belia. When they see someone or something that is without value, they also believe that Belia, the Jewish apocrypha, also believe 
that Belial is a demon of lies and guilt, a prince of hell, and he commands 80 legions of demons, just like um, Joan Wena opined, and, um, <clears throat> and that he specifically reigns, he's the prince of hell that reigns over the northern reaches of hell, they claim. And um, the Jewish Aprokafa also believes that he controls the element of earth and reigns over the earth elementals. That means earth demons. So Belial, they claim, is in charge of every demon that is here in the earth and he controls the northern side of hell. You know, God is the, uh, God sits on the northern side of Zion. And so, because God is great. So, in the kingdom of darkness, this Jewish Aprokafa believes that Belial is the prince of hell. In other words, like Jesus now, who's, who controls or who reigns over the northern reaches of hell. Trying to compare it with how God reigns in the northern side. You know, uh, uh, it says, the Bible says in the book of Psalm, it's Mount Zion, side of the northern city of the great king. So they use that picture here to communicate the reverse in the kingdom of darkness with reference to Belial, the Jewish Aprokafa claims. And this same Jewish Aprokafa, <coughs> no, not, not Jewish Aprokafa now, uh, although some of them, early, in early Christian writings by some of these Jewish Aprokafa, they also claim that it happens to be the first angel of confusion and lust created after Lucifer, just like uh, we have mentioned before. And that paradoxically, the Aprokafa credits Belial as being the father of Lucifer. The Jewish Aprokafa believe that Belial is the father of Lucifer. And that, and the angel that convinced him that that Belial was the angel that convinced Lucifer to rebel, to wage war against God in heaven. Some of these Jewish Aprokafa believe. And that Belial was the first of the fallen angels to be expelled out of heaven. Since he was the one who pushed Lucifer to... Uh, to wage war against God. Now, since the Middle Age, it has been considered that the powerful king of hell is Belial. And he is the one who causes people to receive familiar spirits now. And uh, like we have mentioned before, he happens to be a demon that everyone seems to know a fallen demon that everyone knows to be to, to manifest in the area of inducing people into sexual lust and perversions. Some have really claimed that. Well, the Joshans, the Joshans, G O E T I A, the Joshans believe. That's another school of thought. Uh, the Joshans uh, uh, are a school of thoughts among the Jewish sects too as well, who believe that Belial is a demonic spirit that is very respectful. <laughs> Interesting. It's a spirit that is very respectful and that is a demon of lies and guilt, a prince of hell, as we mentioned before, in charge of over 80, over, he commands 80 legions of demons. Now, a legion means 2,000, 2 to 6,000. That's a legion. Now, if it is 80,000, it means that 2,000 times 80 will, will, will give you how much? 2,000 times 80. Well, you can come up with the summation. <laughs> so, so Belial, they claim, is in charge of 80 legions of demons. And, of course, again, he reigns over the northern reaches of hell, just like the way the Jewish Aprokafa believe. 
and that of course they agree that he controls and reigns over the demons here in the earth and the other priests of hell the Joshans also believe that work with Belial includes Olias O L I A S Olias Asmodi A S M O D A Y and Vasago V A S S A G O so, so they claim don't worry about this writings we'll make the lessons available in, on our youtube channel then you can listen to them uh, but among this school of thought there is another school of thought uh, that seems to give a different picture and um, we want to look at the christian mythology uh, I want to also look at the Catholic encyclopedia, what the Catholics believe of Belial and um, <clears throat> the Church of the Latter-day Saints and um, other sects, what they believe concerning that spirit called Belial. Then at the end of the day, we will not go into the world. And then look at what God's mind is concerning Belial. But we just want you to be familiar with all these sects. Now, this school of thought that we're about to look at believes that Belial is the Belial is the northern prince of satanism is the northern crown prince of satanism this school of thoughts believe and they believe that there are four major crown prince of satanism and it's so interesting that the christian mythology that means even among the pentecostal circles and the charismatic circles, they believe that there are four major crown princes of Satan. There are more major crown, four major crown princes in the kingdom of darkness. And um, also the Roman Catholic Encyclopedia seems to suggest that too, including the <coughs> Church of the Latter-day Saints and other dictionaries also seem to believe that. Uh, some folklore and mythology and le legends also believe same but uh, the first school of thought believe that Belial uh, is the master of the earth but this time around they claim the first school of thought under this particular group that we're about to look at uh, believes that Belial is not a spirit or a demon the first school of thought here believes that Belial is the carnal side of man the lust sex pleasure and therefore the principal drive that makes life what 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 why it's amazing so this school of thought believes that Belial um, it's the human side of man and that's what makes man real. That's what makes man real. That's what makes life worth living. The human part of man, the human side of man, they claim is what makes life worth living. And that um, uh, people derive all the principal emotions of higher ego from Belia, which is the human side of man. Uh, Pride comes from self-control and suppression of, of the Belila. So, uh, they believe that <coughs> when you try to suppress Belia, the humane side of you, it brings pride. They say pride comes from self-control and suppression of Belia. Strength, pleasure, and independence come from embracing it. So, when you embrace Belia, you are independent. So when you refuse not to be under control, 
you have embraced Belia and that life is worth living. And if you look at what you have today in our society, you seem to suggest that because today everybody talks about liberty, liberty, freedom, freedom. I'm 18 years old, I can do what I like and all that. So they are actually saying, really, that's what makes life worth living. Where you have freedom, at liberty to do what you like. And you know, yesterday in our lessons, based on the question his sister asked, we looked at the will and we said, the moment you got born again and you received the Holy Ghost, your will died. You had no will of your own. But here, they believe that you are being cheated. This school of thought says you need to embrace Belial. That's what makes life worth living. And that they believe that Belial is the master of the earth, the force that holds humankind by its balls. Any security or stability are results of lessons learned from dealing with the crown prince. The crown prince called Belilah. Belilah. And Belilah is the champion of simple, simply being human. For the flesh, the material, and the carnal. Belilah is the champion of simply being human. For the flesh, the material, and the carnal. In essence, a reverence for Belilah affirms how good the flesh humanity is so when you look at the beauty of humanity you are looking at belial they claim this school of thought the master of the earth is a sect and is a school of thought they believe that belial is the beauty of humanity unrestrained by law or morality lawless immoral dissolute, lewd lascivious unrestrained uncorped uncontrolled unruling riotous ungovernable wanton profigate Profiglate, desolate, lax, lost, loose, sensual, impure, unchaste, lascivious, immoral, dissolute, dissolute indulgence in sexual, in sensual pleasure. And uh, these were vex notes, vexing notes, V E X E N. Vexing is a person. These were his writings, his notes. And the most boring. Of the four crown princes, its history and origin are most liking more in mistranslation and then assumption than in description or insight. Now, that's a, by another writer. Anton Lavi and others have delighted in the obscure past of Belial as one of the first major crown princes. And so, in this school of thought, they believe that there are four. Uh, crown princes and uh, without the master of self-preservation common sense self-independence so this is the primary objective that they say of Belial he say it is without a master self-control self-perseverance I mean common sense and self-dependence you see these are the four um watch word of belial and uh, of these are the four watch word of the crown princes the four of them and uh, they operate by strength lust power materialism and what are these crown princes what are these four crown princes the four crown princes are satan Lucifer, Leviathan, and Belial. These are this is, this is what they claim. Now let's see what um, the Christian mythology claims. Please, I hope you don't mind. We're, we're studying, amen. So we don't want to, want to look at all these schools of thoughts, and then we'll now look at what the Scripture has to say concerning Belial. All right. Uh, we we hope you don't mind. Hope you don't mind that. Hope you don't mind that. Amen. Okay. Somebody say, what is it? What is this saying? What is this saying? <laughs> no, just be patient. Amen. 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 So, uh, the Christian mythology claims that Belial is a name taken from the Hebrew. And it means worthless one. And they claim that you find that in 1 Samuel chapter 10, 27, 2 Corinthians 6, 15. Arguing from such references, theologians are inclined to see Belial as merely one of the many faces of Satan. That Satan has many faces. Now, the Christian mythology says Christian, Satan wears many faces. And one of such faces is the face of Belial that he wears. 
and that um, <coughs> um, Belaya is merely the uh, tutelary spirit of licentiousness. Certainly, in modern day demonology, demonology, at least he has been transformed to fit Milton's version of him as the most lewd demon in pandemonium. Now, there's a, there's, a, there's a poet, I guess, by the name of Milton, and Milton had a vision, uh, and uh, I guess he even wrote it in a book. I, I may not be able to remember, but it's been a while. Uh, I recall when we did English, I, I read English in my first degree, and we, we did this, yeah, Paradise Lost, right? Thank you, Sister Paula. Paradise Lost, yes. Paradise Lost. That was a, it was a long poetry, a long poetry. Paradise Lost, written by Milton. And Milton um, seems to give the theme of pandemonium uh, as well as being the representative of sloth. Uh, so, with that now, the Christian mythology is dwelling on Milton's vision of Belial with reference to Milton's vision to say the picture that Milton is it John Milton now? What is, what's his first name? Is it John? I, I cannot recall anymore. I think so. I think it's John Milton. I guess so. I, it sounds fam I'm trying to many years in my first degree. I think, I think, I think it was John Milton. John Milton, I suppose. I suppose. It's been a long while. I did that in my first degree, but uh, the Christian community, the Pentecostal circles, the charismatic, uh, the, the, the oneness, the two-ness, the whatever, all believe that John Milton's vision in his book, in his poem titled Paradise Lost, which depicts pandemonium as being the representative of sloth among the schoolmen of the medieval pre period uh, argues that Belial is one of the fallen virtues and so they are dwelling on John Milton's vision even though they have scriptures to, to read concerning such a name called Belial they still believe that for you to know everything about Belial go and read John Milton's Poem. And um, <clears throat> still within the Christian circle, the popular demonologists believe that this is a demon who is said to be created immediately after Lucifer himself. So they agree with the Jewish Apocrypha and the Georgians, and that he appears as an angel in a fiery chariot, but his intention is to deceive all, including those who conjure him. I mean, now, if the Christians can think this way, that he intends to deceive all and those who conjure him, that you are even conjuring him, you are already deceived. True of us. Yeah, true. true. True of us. <laughs> but, but it's sad to say, that's what the Pentecostals believe today. The Charismatic believe that today. The Oneness, the Twoness, the Presbyterians, the, Lut the Lut Lutherians, all of them, they still believe that today. And that he is one of the 72 spirits of Solomon. It's amazing. The Christian mythology believes that. That he is one of the 72 spirits of Solomon. As though Solomon was a demon. I mean, this was a king that God gave wisdom to. Yes, he later worshipped other gods. But then, the grace of the Lord was still upon him. He was still anointed. So they said he is one of the... Belial now is one of the 72 spirits of Solomon. And as one of the Inochans... Inochance demon. He is described as king, as a king, appearing in a, appearing as a beautiful angel, speaking fair, distributing preferments. They claim too as well. That Belial is a king. Now they also believe uh, in in popular modern use the sons of Belial as lawless or rebellious people. Now the Christian mythology believes. That anyone who is lawless and rebellious, probably a reference to Deuteronomy ch ch uh, chapter 13, in the poetry of William Blake, 
Belial remains a god. See that the Christian mythology believes that Belial remains a god linked specifically with the horrors of Sodom and Gomorrah, an obscure demon of bribes and secret assassinations. Milton's, uh, they are still making reference to John Milton's uh, writings on pandemonium and paradise lost. So you find that in um, F37, one, page 1. To 30. A somewhat personalized view of this favorite of the Grimoires. And you can you can read that on the Dictionary of Demons by Fred Gettings, written in 1988. Now, there's a reason why we're going into all of this, like we said, so that you can actually now look at all these various schools of thought. Now, let's see something about the folklore, folklore, native mythology and legends on Belaya. And this folklore within the Christian circle, this is another noun. This is not within the Pentecostal circle now. This is traditional Christianity, orthodox Christianity. Let's use that term. Orthodox Christianity. Folklore, mythology, and legends believe that Belial is one, of, is one synonymous for Satan as one, one of the minor devils, principally the Antichrist. As used in the Old Testament, a modifying genitive, genitive signifying worthlessness or recklessness. Sons of Belial, as in the story of Benjamite war in Judges 19. Here's the underworld, Shoel, that means hell, and the personification of wickedness. Belial may perhaps be a modification of the Babylonian Bilili, a deity connected with the underworld in the Ishtar Tammuz story. And so, and you can find that in the book uh, Folklore, Mythology and Legend by Funk and Wagner's 1984. Um, uh, but the Christian, the Catholic uh, Encyclopedia um, has this to say that Belia is a personal name in the Vulgate and the various English translations of the Bible and is commonly used as a synonym of Satan. The Roman Catholics believe that Belila is synonymous to Satan. Or the personification of evil. The sense is derived from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15, where Belia or Belia. So the Roman Catholic spell is, you know, we, we saw it as B, we spelled it as B-E-L-I-A-L, but the Roman Catholics, even though they spell it that way too, they also spell it this way too, B-E-L-I-A-R, Belia. Because of the pronunciation. Uh, so, as a prince of darkness, where Belial as a prince of darkness is constructed with Christ. You find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15. Christ, the light. So, um, the Roman Catholics believe that Belial is the prince of darkness. Why Christ is the prince of light, the Roman Catholics believe. It is clear in the Vulgate and uh, doorway translations of Todd King's Chapter 21, 10 and 13. Now, we know in our Bible, we didn't see any narration called, we didn't see any book called Third Kings. Have you ever seen any in the Bible? No, no. So, the Roman Catholics believe that there is a Third Kings. There's a book called the Third Kings. Alright, so we're, we're looking at, like we said, we're not criticizing anybody here. We're not, we have already talk, told you what the Pentecostals and the Charismatic and the others believe. We're also telling you what the Roman Catholics believe that there is a book called the Third Kings. All right, so and they are quoting from their own Third Kings here. They say when you look at verses ten and to thirteen of their Third Kings, well, we, we don't have that in the Bible. If we did, we probably would have read it to you. But since they claim that is what they have, well, maybe you can. Many of you are, are Roman Catholics, so you can request for that and read. But we we hope that uh, it do not twist your your mind so why don't you just stay where god has kept you amen amen amen, amen. amen. but if you still feel amen. like if you if you feel that you are very inquisitive to go and find out then somebody say but but you also found out too so let me go and find out but that is why we're teaching you so you are finding out from us <laughs> all right but if you claim you want to now in their book in the roman catholic book called the third kings chapter 20 what is xs1 x X1. X is what? That's, that's going to be 21, because X is not 
X is 10, right? Okay, yes, so so we are correct. X, X, 10. And the one Yes. Yes, so X, 20. X, 20. Okay, X is 1. X is another. X is 10. X is 10. 21. Okay, fine. So, so, so in the Roman Catholic book called Third Kings chapter 21, verses 10 and 13, they believe that uh Belial is a Hebrew word rendered once and rendered as Belial once and twice as the devil in other instances. Two, the translators understood it as a name for the prince of evil and it, and it has passed into English. So Belial is not even an English word the Roman Catholics claim. Now, Incidentally, the Roman Catholics also made reference to John Milton again. Milton, they said Milton, however, distinguishes Belial from Satan, regarding him as the demon of impurity. Now, the Roman Catholics also believe in the Hebrew Bible. The Roman Catholic also believe in the Hebrew Bible. And what they believe in the Hebrew Bible with reference to Beliah, they said, nevertheless, the word Beliah is not a proper name, but a common noun usually signifying wickedness or extreme wickedness. Thus, more renders, more, more, a writer, one of the Catholic writers of the Hebrew Bible, one of the writers of the Hebrew Bible renders sons of Beliah as vice scrondel, scrond, scrondrels. Uh, Judges, in, Judges 19 verses 2 make reference to that. Most prefer worthless fellows. In some classes, Beliah seems to mean destruction, ruins. Thus, in Psalm 12 verses 9, the Hebrew Bible, the word is parallel to the thoughts of utter destructions. Some understand it as destruction. And um, Cheney, Cheney as the abyss. Cheney is another writer again. Cheney is spelled C-H-E-Y-N-E. -E. Cheney refers to Beliah as the abyss. The etymology of the word is doubtful. It is usually taken to be a compound meaning, worthlessness. To it is usually taken to be a compound meaning worthlessness. Cheney suggests an alternative, an alternate that means that from that means that that means that from which no one comes up, namely the abyss. That's how Cheney refers to Beliah. Sure, that means hell. Saint Jerome's etymology without yoke has opined a a gloss in the text of Judges um, XIX 22. I, I, I don't know what XIX means. X is 10, I is 1, then what is X again? X is another 10. So, but, but it should have been written XSI, right? Okay, okay, so the one between the middle subtracts one from ten. Oh, oh, okay, so, so it's 19, right? Okay, so, so St. Jerome's etymology without you, he has even asserted a, as a gloss in the text of Judges 19 22 as contrary to the Hebrew philology. philology. So St. Jerome has. A narration his etymology which is contrary to the hebrew philology now all from the roman catholic circle now conclusively from the roman catholic um, school of thought concerning Beliah, they also believe that Beliah means wickedness or so hell Beliah means hell and could develop into a name for the prince of evil or darkness and as such was widely used in the beginning of our era the roman catholic era under the names of Beliah, B E L I A R, or Beria, B E R I A L, he plays a very important role in the Apocrypha literature, in the Ascension of Isaiah. There's a book called The Ascension of Isaiah.
by the Roman Catholic the 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 Sibylline, the Sibylline Oracles. The Roman Catholics have a book also called the Sibylline Oracles. And the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. The Roman Catholics also have a book like that. So they have narrations on Belial. He is the prince of this world and will come as Antichrist. His name is sometimes given as ne given also to Nero. Emperor Nero. How many of you remember Emperor Nero? The Roman Catholics believe that Nero is the... Um, what do you call it now? Is the incarnation of Belial in human form returning as the Antichrist? That the returning of Nero in the incarnation, the incarnation of Nero in his return, he will come as the Antichrist. The Roman Catholic believes that. So you find that in the Catholic uh, Encyclopedia, volumes two. If you want to, what we just said is there. Now the Church of the Latter Day Saints just only quoted scriptures and um, other schools of thought so that's all we need to let you know about belial amen 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 amen, amen. amen. are you offended amen. amen say amen then if you are not offended <laughs> amen. okay amen. all right so now let's see what belial is uh, somebody said, Brother Ossi, you do you know you spent over one hour giving us a narration? What do we need that for? <laughs> well, please don't be offended, but we just want to show you something. You're doing master's degree in theology. Yeah, it's research. Who, 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 who is doing master's degree in theology? Oh, uh, what are you teaching? You have a class teaching us. Oh, oh, okay, so we're teaching God's people, right? Oh, they are doing master's yeah. degree in theology. No, this is not theology. We're just letting you know the various schools of thought. And, yeah. and it, 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 see, it seems to suggest what the human mind can think. Mm. Can tell you what the human mind can conceive. You see, Paul one time in the, in the course of teaching, he said, Too much knowledge begat madness. Yeah. Now, please go to Colossians chapter 2. Let's read a scripture before we... <clears throat> Uh, uh, <clears throat> now, somebody say, man, this guy, you have to be a devil to know all of this. Well, it doesn't matter what you think of us, but uh, we just wanted to help you out. But if you if you are angry at that, no problem. But, amen. Well, you are speaking for yourself. You say you are not offended, but. I am not offended. Uh -huh. Thank you for the message. Amen. So, I am not offended. Amen. <laughs> amen. All right. So, go to Colossians chapter 2. And if you are there, say Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you are there, say Amen. Amen. Now, in Colossians chapter 2, verses 8, it says, Beware. Are you there? Yes. It said, Beware, lest any man spoil you. True what? True what? <laughs> To true philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of what men after the rudiment rudiments of what of the world well, and not after what and, and not after Christ so all that we just read those were just the philosophies and the traditions of men even though some of them quoted scriptures and it's so sad today that even within the Pentecostal circle to which many of us in this class seems to be part of because many of you belong to Pentecostal churches even though a Christian is not a Pentecostal. And that's the truth. A Christian is not a Pentecostal. A Christian has no business with Pentecost. Pentecost was a feast of the Jews. And Pentecost means 50. 5 zero. That's the meaning of Pentecost. It means the feast of wheat. And the day the Holy Ghost came, the first set of people who received the Holy Ghost were not celebrating Pentecost. The apostles, the 12 apostles and the 120 in the upper room received the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, among those who were celebrating Pentecost, 3,000 of them joined the apostles. So they became 3,000, 120 with the apostles. So, the 
Pentecost has nothing to do with Christianity. And throughout the New Testament, from the book of Acts to the end, the book of Revelations, the word Pentecost was only mentioned twice. One on the day the Holy Ghost came, and the Holy Ghost chose the day of Pentecost to fall on, on the apostles, on the disciples, because it was an opportunity where the whole world gathered in one place. That was why the Holy Ghost chose to fall on that day. Because the, the, the Jews who had the noise in the upper room were Jews from other nationalities. So the whole world gathered that day. And it was just the best day for the Holy Ghost to fall. That's the first time. And then the second time Pentecost was mentioned, was mentioned it was by Paul. Where he said, he will wait until Pentecost. For there is a great and effectual door that await him, but there are many adversaries. He said he would rather wait and not take advantage. And then made reference to Pentecost, which was a feast that was coming. Because he wanted to go to Jerusalem. He said, but now he will wait until Pentecost. So those were the only two occasions the word Pentecost was mentioned. No Christian has, no, has any business with, Pente, with Pentecost. So when you hear Christians today who say, I'm a Pentecostal, it is wrong. It is a wrong thing to, to be part of. First of all, you are not even a Jew. You are not even a Jew to begin with. You are not. And the born-again Christian does not celebrate Pentecost. The Jews are the ones celebrating Pentecost. You are not even a Jew. So when you say, I'm, 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 I'm Pentecostal, what do you mean? Now, they even brought up the word charismatic. What is charismatic? The word charismatic, from where they have the word, uh, the, the, when you hear them say, I'm charismatic, the word really came from the word charis. Charis. C-H-A-R-I-S. Charis. From where you have the English word charisma. And charis is a Greek word which means grace. Grace. Charis means grace. And charis means the power of promotion. Charis means the beauty of God reflected, manifested in the human person. That's the meaning of charis. So, we said the English word is charis charisma. Talking about something that attracts you to someone. There's something about someone that attracts you. When you look at somebody's charisma, for instance, when you look at the president today of the United States, somebody says he has a lovely charisma. There's something attractive. There's something appealing. When somebody looks appealing. And the gospel of Jesus is a gospel of grace. So it, it, it should be appealing to everyone. It is appealing. But sad to say, many Christians today have not made the gospel of Jesus Christ appealing to others. Yet they claim, yet they are the ones who claim that they are charismatic. Yet they are the ones who claim that they are charismatic. There is no such thing as charismatic. There is no such thing as charismatic. They are trying to make it English. Because they have the word charisma. So they say, okay, fine, I'm charismatic. No, 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 no. Because those in the charismatic circle believe that they are, they are the product of grace. But there is nothing charismatic about grace. Grace is what? Charis. Period. Charis, charis. That's all. So they say, I'm charismatic. <laughs> Dear God. Where is it written in the Bible? Now, the reason why we're saying this is because many of us, even in this class now, you probably belong to a charismatic group or a Pentecostal church or Protestant church. Of course, you know how the Protestant came. They came from the Roman Catholic by Martin Luther. And oneness, the oneness are a group of Christians who believe that there is only one God. There are no three gods in one. That's the oneness. 
and then there all these various sects. No, 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 no. Jesus is not coming for denominations. He's coming for one church, his bride. And so for you to better understand what we're about to teach you now, concerning this subject, Belial, you must delete your, your denomination from your mind, your, your, your beliefs, whether Catholic belief. The word Catholic actually means universal. The word Catholic. Catholic means universal church. Universal church. So when someone says I'm a Catholic, it means I'm, I, I, I'm universal. I, I'm a uni I, I, the universal church. Yes, every born again Christian is Catholic, really. We are the true Catholics. We the born again Christians. We are the true Catholics. What you have, those group of people you have with their headquarters in Rome are Roman Catholic people. They are Roman Catholics. They are not Catholics. They are Roman Catholics. There's a difference. That means they are the church from Rome. We are not the church from Rome. We are the church from Jesus. Amen. Born of the water and of the spirit. So we are the Catholic. We are the true Catholics. But those guys with those nice robes, with that matu, and they have a global general overseer called the Pope, they are the Roman Catholics. We are not the Roman Catholics. So when you talk to certain people today, they say, which church do you go to? You say, I'm Catholic. What do you mean I'm Catholic? You are a Roman Catholic. I am the Catholic. You are the Roman Catholic. No, 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 no. I am, I, I, I go to St. Barnabas. I am Catholic. You, you are a Pentecostal. Who told you? I am Catholic. Go and find out the meaning of Catholic. Now, the reason why we said all of this is because there are various beliefs. And we have considered the various options. Even those who practice Satanism, we, we, we told you what they think of Belial. That he's the master of the earth. Belial gives you your, your true self. Gives you independence. Whereas, that is not what God thinks. So we want to see something. Go to 2 Corinthians. Let's see how much we can take. And if not, by 6 in the evening today, we'll continue. And uh, <clears throat> by the message of God, God willing, we'll continue the lesson, even though we started it today at the Bible Center. Um, Second Corinthians chapter six. <clears throat> Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you there in Second Corinthians chapter six? Say Amen. 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 Look at verses fourteen. He said, be ye not equally, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, um, the word unequally or unequal has been oftentimes misunderstood the way it is placed here in scriptures. And when Paul, under the guidance of the Holy Ghost, was teaching this, he was not talking to non-Christians. He was talking to Christians. So, when he says, Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers, it does mean that you can be equally yoked. But then he says, Be ye not unequally yoked. Which means... That there is a possibility that you can be unequally yoked and there is also a possibility that you can be equally yoked but it matters now who you are equally yoked with or who you are unequally yoked with 
But it's so strange that Paul says, Be ye not unequally yoked. At least he should have just said, Be ye not yoked. Be, be ye not equally yoked with unbelievers. He said, Be ye not unequally yoked. Unequal. Now, if something is unequal, it means that the thing cannot be yoked together. True of us. But now he says here, be not unequally yoked. So it means that you can have two things that are unequal yoked together. And then he says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, he goes on to explain what he meant by unbelievers. He says, for what fellowship had righteousness with what? With unrighteousness. What fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? Now, this is one area that has been grossly misunderstood. We are discussing Belial, so we want to explain certain things. We are building up the lessons now. He says, be ye not unequally yoked with, un with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? So, what many preachers have interpreted that remark to me when he says, for what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? They seem to suggest that you are talking about a believer with an unbeliever. That means a non-Christian. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about <clears throat> a Christian and a non-Christian. When he says righteousness with unrighteousness. Actually, the righteousness and the unrighteousness are actually believers. Christians. For you to understand what we're about to show you now, go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 1 John chapter 1. If you are there, say Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> if you are there, say amen. First John chapter 1. Amen. 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 Now, look at verses 5. First John chapter 1. Amen. First John chapter 1. Now, look at verses 9. He says what? If we confess our sins, he is what? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? And to cleanse us from what? From what? From all unrighteousness. Is that in your Bible? Yes. So which means, who is he talking about here? Who is he talking to? To confess his sins? The Christian. Remember, we looked at the four kinds of confession. The Jewish confession, the sinner's confession. The sinner was told to confess the Lord Jesus. The believer's confession is to what? To confess his sins. So he's talking to the Christian here. Now he says that the blood of Jesus, after we confess our sins, will cleanse us from who? From what? From all unrighteousness. So a righteous Christian can be unrighteous. True of us. That's the person you should not marry as a Christian. We will continue in the evening. Bless the name of the Lord. Makraski seketia, brato sokroteke, begeski seketia. Maklata sakrati se, proto sokroteke, begeski seketia, brako skiso, braka ski seketia, brago sko sokroteke, brake seketia. Maklata sakrati seketia, rete zi proto sko seketia. Maklete ski seketia. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you been blessed this afternoon? Yes, I have been blessed. Have you been blessed? I have been blessed. All right, Sister Paula, tell us what was it that blessed you? The word. Hmm. It's interesting that you relieve us of the climax. So we have no choice but to go and continue to read and come back at six o'clock this afternoon. Are you serious? Yes, we have no choice. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Let's ask Brother Aloy. Brother Aloy, what blessed you in the lessons? What have you learned today? Um, I have learned that um, uh, the word, the liar, as I never come across it in my life. Even uh, <laughs> this um, uh, first one Corinthians chapter uh, 6 and first john you know i saw the word belah there i i i i did you know underline it when i read it some time ago but i never understood exactly what it is and uh, like paula said we're waiting to hear more about it in the next lesson amen, amen. thank you so much sir thank you so much it, it gives me an idea of uh, what all that other denominations think of certain things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like what, sir? Tell us. Like what, sir? Uh, um, the different um, interpretation of that word, Belial. Yes, sir. Uh, and I come to understand, even we haven't gone into what the Bible said about it, that the liar is a, a manifestation of a Satan. Mm. In my own thinking, you know. Mm. So you are expressing your opinion now, amen. Yeah, yes. Yes. Manifestation of satanic corporation of different kinds. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. Right. But do you think it, 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 there is need for us to know it, to know this lesson? Do you think there is need for this lesson or we shouldn't have discussed this lesson? What's your opinion? There is need to know it. You know, there is need to know it then and then so that we will be able uh, to understand where we stand in the Lord. You know uh, what we need to do to to be a good Christian, so that we will not make a mistake. You know because these different interpretations, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Bible interpretation is what is going to guide us. Amen. So that you you cannot be deceived anymore. Is that what you are trying to say, sir? Yes. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sister Joy. Let's hear your thoughts on it. Lord, uh, Hallelujah. I am all ears. <laughs> <laughs> I am all ears. Are you serious? I'm really interested in the ones that I've had. Amen. Tell us, what was it that interested you? Uh, what interested me is that I've never heard of this name. I've never heard, I've never heard anyone preach about it. Mm. It's very surprising. Amen. What I had and all the interpretation that it was given there. Amen. Do you feel disappointed? Maybe, uh, for instance, let's suppose you were a Roman Catholic or a Pentecostal. Do you feel disappointed that, oh, this is what um, uh, my beliefs have always been, uh, the church that I worship believes among maybe the Catholic circle, the Pentecostal circle, the charismatic? Are you... Are you surprised with all these beliefs, including those who practice satanism and all that? Ah, um, um, yes. Yes, I am. And the real thing is that they won't even preach. In fact, I don't know where the, is their the knowledge. Or, or I come to see it is that it's where their knowledge to them. Mm. All that they know. Because so many things that the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. Mm. Through you. Amen.
But I think at the end, you will land and it will be a very a good landing. Amen. Of Praise God. will be seen in the word of God. Amen. Praise God. I, I've never heard of this name. Amen. Already I've started seeing it in the scriptures. Amen. Praise God. I'm waiting in the evening. Amen. Amen. So by six, we will continue. Amen. Yes. All right. So let's hear. Um, Sister Hama, let's hear your take on it. Then we'll take questions if there are questions. Sister Hama, what's your take on it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is good to know, you know, all the angels and all the roles they play. And therefore, if somebody comes to you genuinely, you know, some people are very, very intellectual. So you can patiently, by the grace of God, take them through what you know and what you know to be the truth. Mm. By the power of the Holy Spirit, some may be convicted. So it's good for us to be very knowledgeable. But, but don't you think that on the areas we looked at was more like a waste of time? Maybe there might be some people online now who probably think, oh, he just wasted our time. Really? Just giving us different beliefs and all that. Oh, what is that to us? Okay, let's ask you, Sister Amma, what is what is that to you? That is informative because there are many things that we don't know. We are not even aware of. So we do, for me, I do appreciate that you took the time to research and brought the research to us so we know the information that is out there. Because sometimes when people ask you or they start talking about something and they know you are naive, that's where they dive deep. But if they know you have some knowledge about it, they pause and listen to you. Mm. And by the grace of God, we can win some of them that are, you know, some intellectuals, you have to confront them with intellectual uh, information. Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's ask Sister Benedict. Sister Benedict, ma, let's ask you. Um... What is the lesson to you? Do you think it's a waste of time? Or um, did you learn anything? <laughs> uh, for uh, glory and grace. For glory and grace. Yeah, the only thing is that um, um, I, this is my first, my first time hearing about this name. And I don't know anything about it. And I'm itching to hear more about it. Are you serious? Why? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you interested in it, Sister Benedict? Knowledge has come. I have to learn it. Once it has come up, I have to learn it. Are you serious? Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Yes. Brothers and sisters, any question? Please tell us your name and where you are calling from. What part of Zion you are calling from? If you have any question. Any question? You have a question? Um, yes, I do. Okay. We were long today. Is he... Please, we don't know your name now. Your voice sounds familiar, but oh. we don't know your name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I apologize. My name is Sister Keisha from Georgia. From the northern... Oh. Go ahead. From La Planta, part of Zion. Oh, God. Okay. okay, go ahead. And now, this, now, at the end of it all, Kabila, is it an angel? Is it an angel of deception? Where is Sister Keisha? We, ju we just started. Okay. We just started. Oh. We were telling you the very, we were telling you the various schools of thought, so we just started. Amen, Sister Kisha. We, are, we didn't say we are done. We said we will continue in the evening, didn't we? No, we're not done. Uh -huh. No, we're not done. But I wanted to see no. like, with all these mythologies. No, Sister Kisha. Oh, okay. Why don't you wait till the evening? Eh? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. I hope we've answered your question. Hello, Sister Kisha. Oh, I, I bet it will be. <laughs> No, we've answered the question. We say wait the evening. I think it's a <laughs> that's that's the answer we will give you for now. Amen. Yes, that's the answer. Yes, okay. amen. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. you. All right. Any other question, please? Any question? Now, the, there's a reason why the Spirit of the Lord wants us to know these things because you see, it will help us know where to put Satan where he belongs and how to where to put his cohorts to where they all belong and how to terminate and paralyze the enterprise and the expressions of Satan 
in any fashion or form so that you can always be victorious all through amen if the likes of paul the apostle and the apostles were successful victorious in their christian work with the lord by the same holy spirit we can also be victorious too but we need to have the right knowledge to walk in the light of this amen amen, amen. all right any other question All right, let's pray. Brother Aloy, we would like you to pray for us and dismiss us. Brother Aloy, sir. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Amen. You are a good God. Yes, Lord. Thanks for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. And we know that you are the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the yes, only Lord. true God. Yes, Lord. The most God, we thank you. Yes, Father, Lord. we thank you for the lesson today. And we are hoping to know more about this word, Belial. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. That we, today, as we find favor before you today, Jehovah, may we find favor before man and woman in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. We find favor at home, Jehovah. Amen. May we find favor at, at work. Amen. May we find favor everywhere we go today in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, let, all, let your name be glorified. Amen. Jesus, now I pray. Amen. 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 Glory and grace. For glory and grace. Oh, glory and grace. Oh, glory and grace.